We'll finish up our lightning round with Miles uh, from Spinlock. Now you handle more of the deck, uh, the deck wear, yeah? Yeah, look after okay. the deck wear range. The th walking by, what, as a Melgus 24 racer and an I-14 owner, uh, uh, this thing interested me a lot because it looks like a PFD, but it looks bare, like it's got almost no flotation. Yeah, well it's certified as a 50 Newton buoyancy aid, yeah. um, but what we've tried to do is an extension of the deck wear range, is expand into the area of exactly as you say, which is growing, where people are sailing sports boats, they're wearing buoyancy aids, but the buoyancy aids they tend to be wearing are ones designed specifically for dinghy sailing. Right. So they're short cut, they're quite thick, they're very simple design. A lot of automobility. Not a lot of mobility, yeah. not a lot of breathability, often you're wearing it on top of a spray jacket, a Gore-Tex jacket. So what we've done with the Zero is really take a you know, fresh look at this category of the market and design something which is a little bit bigger, yeah. so being able to thin down the foam panels, because although it still keeps the waist clear, um, by moving it down here, extra foam at the bottom and on the bottom at the back as well, means that you can actually make the key areas a little bit thinner, so movement around the boat, etc. is going to be a lot, a lot smoother. Um, We've also taken off any of the uh, attachments on Pockets the outside, and so all the adjustment is actually on the inside right. through a Velcro panel, so you can adjust it to fit on uh, many different sizes, and that means on the outside there's less to snag. We then brought in some other features like uh, hand warmer pockets, neoprene lined pockets, keep your hands warm, big mesh cargo pockets, which again, because of where they sit on the product, if you're putting things in there, it's sitting much flatter against you rather than in a central right. chest pocket right. that where puts it's sticking it on, straight out, sticking yeah. straight sure. out on top of the phone. So, cool. and what's again, what 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 does what something like this retail for? Um, it's going to be around about uh, around about ninety euros. Okay, um, over here. But one of the bigger things as well, which we've done, is we've put a venting back system in there. Because a lot of you guys are sailing with breathable jackets on there, yeah. you stick a solid foam buoyancy aid right on top of your jacket, it's not breathing anymore. So by adding a venting system in here, which lifts it off your back, you've got mesh panels on the side there, I don't know if that will come through. Yeah, sure. But it actually creates an airflow. So that'll keep the, the keep the sweat from here. pouring down my back when I'm hiking. Yeah. Exactly. Right good, good, good. So you know that just makes so it's generally going to be a more comfortable workable jacket. And then finally, we've got a big articulation panel in the back as well. So it's nice and slim, fits you tight. It actually flexes with your body rather than just being jammed on as the more basic buoyancy aids are. So yeah, it's going to be an exciting new product. So for is us this suitable? So this is definitely suitable for dinghies, though. I mean, yeah, I mean we've designed it's not, it. It's not going to float you with your head up if you're unconscious, but no, I don't think anyone cares a, about that for a dinghy. No, I mean a buoyancy aid is not designed to do that. It's yeah, just to give you extra exactly. rotation. But we've targeted the sports boats, but we've had a lot of dinghy sailors on here who've been. Uh, Think, you know, no, I mean, I, I'm telling you, as someone, I've got, you know, I've got a Lotus, you know, uh, a PFD that's way too big, it's just too puffy. Yeah. You know? So yeah. That, it's definitely, that definitely is appealing, and the price doesn't seem crazy at all either. So. Yeah. So no, these will be available right from March. Very cool. Uh, March. What else you got? Uh, Any else new or? Yeah, a couple of little news. Go ahead. We have the deck vest, which I think you should probably know. Yep. Which we've, uh, oh, well, just well. made a couple of little tweaks to it. We've changed the way the zips are hidden away inside there now. So it's a little bit neater, improved the labeling, little things. So little details just to freshen yep. it up for sure. this year. And then we have two new models as well. Um, we've introduced a hammer activation system. Right, right. Um, so in the past we've used the UML, which you know for 90% of our customers I think is the better system. But for a certain position in the market, the hammer is certain position on the on the on the, on the on boat, on the you boat know. as well. Definitely, <laughs> the hammer is a is a good solution. So yeah. we've introduced a 150 newton version of ours of, with a hammer inflator. And, the, and how, how, what's the depth when the hammer would actually go off? Literally about 10 centimeters. 10 so centimeters. it's not much, you know. So so if I get uh, if I get a, a, a wave washing over me on the rail, is it going to go off? It won't do. It will just because it works on the actual water pressure. You've actually got to be underwater there. So you know that's the difference between the UML which works when any water hits it, right. this actually works on the pressure, so it's got to go down below a certain depth. Right on. It. So and, and how much does this add to the overall cost of a vest for about, the bowman out there, you know? Around about £30. £30, pounds. And okay. also what's with hammer is that the rearming kit is more expensive as well. Right, right. So we've kind of positioned it, you know, it's it almost like the sort of professional, more serious guy who really wants that. Yeah. Um, and then we've launched a bigger version, which is a 275 Newton. Um, is that the guy's my size? <laughs> uh, not really a size things. It depends on what you're wearing, actually. Right, right, right. If you're carrying a lot of tools, maybe work boots on there, um, 
then having a bigger inflation, a bigger inflatable actually will help on there. Um, so it's all the same features as the harness, but added on a little pocket on there. You put your EPIRB or um, mobile, you know, whatever pieces you're carrying on the radio. Little attachment points as well. So just aimed at much slightly more sort of professional, professional guys who are wearing a life jacket eight hours a day. I'll, th I'll tell you what, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing how far these things have come from when I started racing, you know? Yeah. Uh, just to see this kind of stuff and you know, I think yeah. Spinlock was a big part of that, bringing a lot of the climbing technology in and uh, Yeah, you know, it's I'm, moving it things on to sort of, you know, what, the big thing we've done with life jackets is about personal ownership. So instead of safety equipment being left on a boat um, yeah. and assuming it's being there, it's actually designing it as something which you buy. You're a serious sailor, you've got your nice jacket, you've got your boots. The sensible part is to have your life jacket as well, that you know it's service, you've got that. So that's why it looks nice, it fits nice, and people buy it, buy into that. You know, it's the having a bit of respect for the gear that you're using. It's so. also historic, that's how it always was. You brought your own gear on board, yeah. you know? <laughs> At some point, people decided to buy buy stuff for the boat. Yeah. And uh, I know, I mean, I've got I've got mine, and it's good stuff. So. Yeah. So, All right, Miles. Well, hey, thank you for, uh, for the little tour, and I uh, hope you had a good show, and uh, right. we'll see you guys soon. All right.